Hey everyone, welcome to this weekend's episode of Corporate Corner. My name is Cynthia Petion with Novatech. Hey everyone, Eddie Petion here with Novatech. Thank you everyone for joining us on this beautiful Sunday evening. And uh, this is actually, I think, what, our third um, session that we're doing with uh, Corporate Corner? Yeah, this is our, our third episode. We actually missed last week. I was I yeah. was out of town last week. But yeah, this is now our, our third uh, episode. But it's been fun. You know, the past few weeks we picked out on topics and talk about, you know, um, self-developing and uh, personal development subject or even how to build a business. And we also go into the market to see, you know, the market trends and everything, how the current Forex and crypto market is going but uh mrs Pedion, so what do you want to talk about this week uh, aside from the kink in my neck so forgive me if yeah. i can't turn around fully and uh take a look at you but um I, 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 I did I'll something turn around and look at you. About that? <laughs> i did something to my neck over the past couple of days but um as you know and and uh some uh family members and such know uh, i was actually traveling this past week uh to Haiti, uh, which is where our families are from. I was act I'm a, actually a first generation American, but you were born I'm in Haiti. Hundred percent Haitian, uh, born. Yeah. Kind of raised in Haiti, but loved the country. But uh, how, how, what did you see last time you were there? Well, I, the last time I visited Haiti, guys, I was uh, 20 years old. So needless to say, it's been quite a bit of time since I've been there. Um, a lot of changes. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Haiti, as is, is, um, you guys may know, you know, has suffered a lot uh, through the economy, as well as you know, natural disasters, uh, earthquakes, mm. and and such that you know, in, in some, some ways, have people, ravaged yeah. uh, the the country. But you know, in in doing so, and of course, there's you know, uh, amazingly um, natural beauty in, mm. in both the people and the land that are there as well. Um, Haiti was what, one of the first, if not the first, yeah, countries that, to gain its independence absolutely, um, yeah. through through its slaves there. So, very rich in history. But one of the things that uh, prompted the topic I want to discuss today mm. was the the state of the economy there. And um, I'd like to talk today about uh, efficiently building businesses, particularly through through networks. Because in traveling over the past couple of years, I think we've been to what maybe thirty countries in the past. Yeah, the past two years. couple of years, yeah, there's been a lot of travels. You know, sometimes we do miss our families and kids. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, all yeah. the time. But. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> but it, but it's it's been a very enriching experience as well. And one of the things that you know we found quite a bit in in our travels is that. You know the state of the economies in a lot of countries, and now what's 2020, really you know should be a lot more advanced, and for whatever reasons they they aren't. But you know we're fortunate to be living here um, in in a country where uh, opportunity is more abundant than in, in many other areas. But one of the reasons why we started networking and um, in cryptocurrency in particular is the ability for us to be able to share these opportunities worldwide with people we wouldn't normally have been able to share them with. You know, it's not often you get to speak to people in countries that are clear across, you know, different hemispheres and time zones and have the same opportunity as far as building a business and wealth um, is concerned as you do here, for example, in the, in the U.S. So I, I'd like to talk about how people can maximize on mm -hmm. those benefits so that they can have more of an equal opportunity when it comes to building um, a, a business that they can actually sustain a decent lifestyle off of. Absolutely. And then, you know what? Because and we have to say thanks to the internet and thanks yes. to technology that nowadays we're able to reach out to so many people across the globe, like you said, mm -hmm. and without actually physically being there. So. So one of, one of the things I, I, I find funny is that uh, when you when you talk about networking and networking really you know people get this preconceived notion that they're talking about MLM all the time and automatically MLMs get associated with pyramid schemes mm -hmm. and Ponzi's and those types of things but any type of conversation that you have with somebody is essentially networking right Absolutely. I mean it's even marketing. if you're if you own a barber shop and you do haircuts. How do you talk to people other than to talk to them about the business, whether that's online marketing or through magazines? Correct. You have people working for you, they're what? 
They are your they they are your network. They're part of your they're part of your your network exactly. But people get this uh, really bad preconceived notion in their head as soon as you talk about affiliate marketing or network marketing or anything like that. And of course, you know, um, building networks as far as affiliate marketing and MLMs are concerned is a great way to be able to build a business very quickly. You know, they say if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go further. Uh, do it with others. So, but any form of marketing really is a, is a form of networking, right? Sure. Right. So, one of the tips I'd like to um, give people is first of all, get rid of all the preconceived notions of what you think marketing is. I, I find it funny that, you know, people would just do about anything for a hustle, right? And some legal, some not. <laughs> but the minute you say something about uh, MLM, all of a sudden they feel like you're doing some kind of bad thing. But get rid of any preconceived notions of what you have and what marketing can be. Um, and, but very importantly, if you're going to build a network or build a business, find something that you yourself would use mm -hmm. and enjoy. Absolutely. Because you have to... Or something, passionate. something that can actually, you know, you getting benefits out of it, you're getting and you also out of have it. to try it. You can't go sell somebody, you know, some perfume, and you want to convince them, but you don't want to wear it yourself. You don't want to wear it yourself. <laughs> you know, so. Or you're selling health products, uh, but you don't but take you're not them. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, you have to be a spokesperson for whatever it is that you're you're marketing, and that actually means use of the product. Um, and if that means you're selling an investment service, you have to be invested in it. If you're selling a health product, you have to be using it so that you can have some kind of testimony mm. as to what it is. But also, you know, find something that you enjoy using so that you know you'll continue to use it, but also something that's in need. Um, a lot of times people are selling services or products just because it sounds like a good idea, but it's not something that you need necessarily. Um, I see a lot of people who sell, for example, um, signals for trading. You know, we, we run a, a trading business and opportunity um, for Forex and cryptocurrency. And you have people who don't trade. They don't have a platform. They're not doing anything other than selling you subscriptions on signals that you're probably not going to use if you're not a skilled trader. But a lot of his stuff you can get online for free. Absolutely, you can absolutely get them for free. You know, people ask us why don't we provide signals, and we say we are working on that. You know, in the near future, but it's not something we want to charge people for. No, it's like because you can go. A signal really is somebody's idea on how a currency is going to move. That is just the idea. It's not foolproof. You know, they can give you that signal yeah. and you lose your shirt playing that signal. But if you're paying for it, it's even going to be worse because they're like, I paid for this and I lost all my money. So, right. Yeah. Like you have, yeah. um, you know, biz healthcare businesses and he people are very into their health now mm -hmm. nowadays, especially. And uh, I, th I think it's an, an excellent field. It's one of the first Absolutely. fields that we actually entered into um, to do our network marketing. And we got a taste of selling a product that we were really, really happy with. And it had a great comp plan, um, a lot of which I, you know, um, utilized when we were designing our own comp plan mm -hmm. because it paid handsomely, but it also you know, safeguarded the company and it just made a lot of sense to me. And I, I really like those features of a traditional network marketing company uh, and kind of rolled that into what we're doing as well. Um, but in, in doing so, I, I, I think we also develop what I, I like to call the annoyance factor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, before, yeah, uh, the annoyance factor, I already see where you're going with that because yeah, that's that concept of no one can get within three feet of me without me selling them the product. Um, and it, it gave us a lot of discipline, you know, as far as, as marketing and networking is concerned. Uh, we had to have meetings regularly. We had to have phone calls regularly. And, you know, th that brings me to another, you know, topic is that if you're going to network something, if you're going to market something, not only do you have to try it and use it, not only does it need to be a, a need so that people have an interest in using it, but you also have to be comfortable in, in talking to people mm -hmm. uh, about it. And you can't, you're never gonna get that in that comfort zone if you don't know your product. That's the number, that's, that's the more. You have to know your product, be passionate about it, and know, like you said, the results that it can provide to somebody. And basically all you're doing is, you, you, you're just happy to share something that you like. 
Right. It's not like I'm saying, look, you need to buy this. Look, this is what I've been doing. It's been so successful for me. I've been so feeling so much better about it. You should try it, man. You know, it's that simple. You know, you talk about your experience. Right. And, you know, I one of the things I, I like to ask people when um, they're looking for an opportunity, and our opportunity is not for, for everyone. Um, and Because not everyone likes to make money, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to make money. No, but, you know, aside from that, you know, you have, I always ask people, if you could do anything in life, anything in life without fear of failure, what would you do? And you'd be surprised at some of the answers that we get. Um, some people like to cook, they would open a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Some people like to make jewelry and that's what they would do. Uh, some people want to teach sports. Um, you know, I've, I've met people who have very, you know, artistic abilities and they do all these digital videos and stuff like that. Really, really cool stuff. So if you can find what it is that you like to do, find the market that you want to market to, you know, the, your, your niche and your, your following, and then you, you have to just get out there and, and promote it, but do what you do and do it better than anyone else so that somebody else is actually willing to pay you for Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. So do if, it with passion. Yeah, so if you're a good coach and mentor, do that all day long. You know, um, as far, especially when it comes to network marketing, um, you know, there are certain things to, to keep in mind. And, you know, people don't necessarily follow the company. They follow you and the message that, that, that you're sending and your passion and your drive. So if you're not passionate about it and you're not um, wanting to have meetings uh, to help them, you can't, you can't expect anything like that to, to, to build. Uh, the good side, obviously, is you want to be able to partner with people when you are networking who are stronger where you have deficiencies. Correct. Right? So it's great if you're great at math and I'm great at math, but neither one of us are great at talking to people, then we have a deficiency between yeah. the two of us. Then it's not a good match. Right. So always look for, for partners that can make up for what you lack so that together you can be a, a stronger partnership or a stronger team. But also don't fall into the pitfall of thinking that if you have some strong leaders or players on your team, that you can set them up, throw them in your downline, and then have nothing else to do. And I, I hear that all the time. I just need two good leaders, and I, <laughs> or just three good leaders. And one of the reasons why I think that happens is because when people are marketing programs, they like to tell you just, all you have to do is recruit two. Yeah, just get two, and the two get good. Or get just three. get three, yeah. and then those three get three, and then those three get three. And in an ideal world, that would be great. And, but you're kind of also setting people up to do the minimum. Correct. Right. If you want to build a really strong business, you can't already go into it with the mindset with what's the least I have to spend, what's the least I have to do, because to make the most amount of money. To make the most <laughs> amount of money, it doesn't it doesn't work yeah. that way because you're going to, you know, you ask the universe for peanuts, it's going to deliver mm -hmm. you peanuts. You know, so it's important to, you know, go out there and find people who lack in your deficiencies, but then don't throw the business at them. Absolutely. Because you know, just with what you were just saying with finding the right business partner. A lot of people, sometimes what they do also, they'll spend 90% of their time focusing on this one person they know oh, in the market yeah. that, look, if I get this guy on my team, I'm going to kill it. And they will spend months, weeks, if not years sometimes trying to go after the same person. And sometimes you may just get lucky. You finally get that person to join your team. But guess what? A lot of times the one you think was going to do the most, do the least. So never disqualify yeah. people, all right? Because every single person can be a superstar. Every That's single one. So true. You know, absolutely. People are trainable. Yeah. yeah. And every um, single one of them. our last business, we started it with uh, what I call the peanut gallery <laughs> because none of us had experience. It was about five or six of us, and we were just all just passionate about what it was we were doing and literally um, grew a very, very successful business you know with people who had no experience um no education in the market didn't even have a flip phone yep. uh, was still uh, using flip phones yep. didn't even have laptops so you're right 100 percent about that never discount anybody and don't have your business rely again on that one superstar or, or, or something that because one thing you know i find especially about um leaders and you know you, you get into a business, if you're a strong leader, it doesn't matter what your upline does, you're, you're just going to take it and run with it. But you're going to find a lot of people also who resent the fact that you put them into the downline in an effort for them to work for you. 
you know, so you'll find that they may not be as interested in the business as they could have been, or because they don't feel like they're getting the support they need from from their upline. Yeah, for them to it. And and to me, I don't think it's right. Also, because sometimes I hear people say, "Well, can you put somebody strong on my team?" But what have you been doing? <laughs> you know, it's like well, and how are you going to business. contribute to that yeah. person's business? Is that person going to end up being all responsibility to teach and coach, or are you going to take what you've learned and then go pass it on down the torch? You know, if we can't just pass it on down and pass it on down, you're never going to get to that level where you say, you know what? And you can never take a break. I know people say we can always. Get to the level where you go lay back and you buy the beach. And you do get to a level tanning. where it's a little more comfortable, yeah. um, but, but you, there's you, a lot of building in the process. Absolutely. It becomes more and more responsibility right. every day because so many more people are relying on your expertise and also relying on you. But with the internet now, you can do so much of it online. Um, I know people like to meet face to face and, you know, I, I welcome, you know, and tell people, you know, the opportunity to do that is fine. You know, but I, I don't like also seeing people spend money they don't have yet because they think they have to travel to all these expensive areas in order to build recruit an or build an office or um, get these very expensive venues. Essentially, the only thing you're doing is showing off. Absolutely. You know, so it's people want to follow money mm -hmm. and success, but in the, in the beginning stages, word of mouth is just the, the best way to just, you know, go at it. Um, and if you need help sometimes with proof, sometimes the best proof is just your upline. Absolutely, yeah. Because some, some uh, you're great you're talking about your upline because sometimes you have to take yourself out of the equation. Yes. Right? Because let's say you're talking to this great, uh, to this friend of yours or he's a good networker, but he knows you and he say he knows that, okay, you've been doing okay for yourself. Mm -hmm. How are you going to go try to tell this guy, I'm doing so well right now, instead of putting yourself there, Say, so listen, I've been working with, you know, this couple people from uh, from the U.S. This is uh, Mrs. Padion, Miss, Mr. Padion. This guy, you know, he's, he's my mentor. And I'd love to one day just so she can show you what he's done for me. Basically, you've already taken yourself out of the oh, equation. Yes, you what works, even. too, is a lot of times people say, well, you know, you haven't made it yet. And, you know, whatever else, just like you just said. But... I always like to ask, well, are you going to base your success on what I'm doing? Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe you'll do better than me. Yep. <laughs> you know, I, I can't imagine that if we went to the same school, drove the same cars and whatever else. Don't you love when they say, well, how much money have you made so far? <laughs> it's like, what, what does my paycheck have to do with you? has nothing to do with your you paycheck. Not, I may make millions. You may make a few bucks yeah. and, and vice versa. Absolutely. I may, you know, totally tank at this and all of a sudden you become the, the rock star no one, you know, you didn't expect That's to That's the beauty about network marketing is that you can, people always say, well, I wish I had joined a year ago. I wish I was one of the first 10 people that joined. It's BS, guys. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't way. work that way. No. You could be at the very last, the bottom of the line, and end up passing everyone above you. That's true. And make a lot, book look more money than everybody else that came before you. Right. So let me work for me, and let me work for my team. That's what's important. Excellent point. That's very well said. And work, working for your team. One of the things that people need to keep in mind also when they are building uh, downlines and networks is automatically you start to look at where do I need volume or where do I need the stronger player mm -hmm. and if you have to set up legs you don't want them on your strong leg you want them on the weak leg yeah, and absolutely. you know yeah. all of these things are yeah strategically done but you know I, I just did a video if you if you check out our YouTube channel also that was on, a great video by the way yeah. thank you on, on building downlines and you need to really keep your team in mind first before yourself because if you can do that and build strong teams the money's going to naturally come anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, again, if you just separate people that can work well together, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Mm -hmm. Because in the long run, they'll do much better than had you separated them. So don't focus so much on the quick money, the fast money. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with fast money. You know, get rich quick seems to have a negative connotation. But who wants to get rich slow? You don't want to yep. spend 10 years doing what you could do in a year. Absolutely. But in the same token, you want to make sure that whatever you're building is strong enough that it will last for years. And then they, you help everybody, you know, you all the way down the line, everybody benefits. Yeah, I mean, it's like a ridiculously high number. It's like 85% or 90% of people um, who do network marketing or affiliate marketing that stay with the same company for 10 years or more are millionaires. 
absolutely. Eighty-five to ninety percent, as long as they stay with the same company for ten years or more. And I think that's where we're kind of um, missing the ball here a lot of times, is because people are jumping from company to company. They see another opportunity that. Um, Flashing light syndrome, I like to call it, or finding Nemo mm. syndrome. I have no patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you remember in Finding Nemo where they had that light yeah. flashing in front of them, and they were like, yeah. I feel Dora. happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> and uh, And Marlon, because they had this flashing light in front of them, and the light comes on, and all of a sudden it's like a, a giant fish ready to attack them. And I compare... Uh, online businesses and network marketing very similarly you have these flashing lights and bells and whistles and then sometimes it doesn't even make sense the returns that they're promising or the comp plan doesn't make sense or the service or the product doesn't make sense and then you kind of get roped into doing something that you think is going to make you a millionaire but it doesn't make sense no you know so um but anyway those those, those are just my um my, doesn't my mean viewpoints. doesn't mean that every company you join if you see some um, you know, something is seriously wrong with that company, run. Because don't just stay because we told you stay with them for 10 years. Because there's some red flags in some companies that well, yeah, immediately, you, you know, okay, right this is one. not for me. Yeah, I mean, you can ask. Um, and I remember this um, back when I was in the corporate world. I walked into this one bank one day and um, I got the job. It was a great job. And I got on the phone and the, what they asked me to do. <laughs> I just see that it wasn't right by the customers. I made like two, three phone calls to a couple of clients and then it was lunchtime. Uh, I picked up and left for lunch and never went back. <laughs> I think they were selling like swamps or yeah, something. Yeah, they were like <laughs> selling some crazy properties down in South Florida. Not even South, somewhere in the swamps of Florida and literally charging people 20, 30 times the value of the okay. land. And I saw that, I was like, I can't possibly sit there and take money right. from people like that and it was it was a big company and I just I didn't do it and um, so sometimes you have to know what you're doing with your true morals yeah. you know and I mean listen not, we're, not, we're not the moral police here for, um, for money yeah but we wouldn't be doing the right thing if we didn't tell people to make sure that you're doing the right thing Absolutely. you know um, it's, it's to me it's just a part of life I don't think millionaire money or millionaire opportunities comes with doing the wrong thing or shafting people so if you know what you're doing isn't a legitimate legitimate business going into it with the mindset like well we all know it's not a legitimate business so we'll all do it and we'll just all make some quick money but there's always somebody that's going to get burned Correct. At, at the end who's the last person who, to join who just you yeah. know lost so you want to make sure that um you're taking the time to, to research something that it makes sense and that you're not just doing it um, a fly-by-night type of opportunity because every single time one of those things don't work out you're losing credibility and it's going to get to the point where if you're not a little bit more discerning about the types of businesses that you're involved in you will lose all credibility and it can take years to build and a fraction of a second to lose yeah, I, I, so, I love network marketing um, network marketing is one of the fastest ways to make um, a successful business mm -hmm. with as little knowledge as possible, uh, as little capital as possible, and it's an amazing, amazing way to, to meet people all around the world that you can help. So, you know, if you want to talk about building a business, to me, hands down, it's, it's the way to go. You know, again, just some key tips on building the business is find something that's credible that you enjoy, mm, absolutely. something that has a need in society, and be there for your, for your teams, and you'll almost always make it hands down. Yep, no, absolutely. All right, so um, let's talk about what's going on in, in the market. Let's talk about our market watch this week. Oh yeah, this is um, yeah. <laughs> well, we it's always been a rough end, week. It was yeah. So just so you guys know, we always end the show just you know not really giving you guys any financial advice or tips or anything like that, but just talk about how the market went and um, what happened. Yeah, it was actually kind of. Every week we said the market was crazy, but I think that's for that's trading period, guys. That's one thing that I want to so tell true. you. It's not there is no good week or bad week. Okay, in trading is basically like is what position were you in when things went the other way? Yes. <laughs> All right. So, like for example, last week we spoke about um, a couple weeks ago. We spoke about how the U.S. dollar, everything was going against the U.S. dollar. Right. Guess what happened last week? The, the US, U.S. dollar, dollar was 
killing it. Killing it. It's guys. like it was the strongest currency um, by far in every market. And actually, when the DXY went over 100, on average, it's at 96 or 98. 98 now, is what's the DXY? High. The DXY is the value of the US dollar, basically. Oh, okay. okay. But um, it, it, it hits it, its highest in, in since, I think, since beginning of last year. Now, the euro, what happened with the euro, because the US dollar was gaining so much in value, and then you had the coronavirus, which is all been, is globally affecting the market. So the euro actually tanked last week, which was its lowest since... Um, like three years, I think. Yeah, in three years. What about yeah. the Aussie dollar? Not the Aussie, I want to talk to you about that. The Aussie was <laughs> actually the that. worst performer. performer. The Aussie, the lowest that it has been in. Aussie is Australian dollar, so in case you guys don't know what it is. But um, yeah, so the Australian dollar took the biggest hit this week. Lowest has been for over a decade. Wow. For over a decade, which is incredibly like unheard of. And one of the reasons with the Australian economy being impacted so much with what's going on today in the economy with coronavirus mm -hmm. in China is they heavily dependent on China. Most mm. of their trades come from China. Right, because they're so, supposed to. Exactly. Asia. It's really the closest country to Asia. Right. And um, whenever there's the economy in Asia uh, is not doing well, the Australian dollar took take a, a, a huge beating. So yeah, so it didn't perform at all um, last week. Towards the end of the week, literally a couple hours before the entire market closed, what happened? Everything just went. It's like a <laughs> roller coaster. It was that's, like it went yeah. up and then went that's down. My, that's my Wizard of yeah, Oz so, comparison. I'm like, what? Sh <laughs> so that <laughs> was a Japanese comes. dollar. The Jap the yen. The yen took a dive. Why? Because there's a fear of recession in Japan right now. In addition to that, the U.S. dollar, the PMI report at three o'clock. I think it was like two o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday, went a lot less than expected so everything started reversing for those of you who had like long positions waiting all week and been suffering i'm sure you had a little reversal, right? you know a uh, breath of <laughs> a little breath of air um, right after that yeah but yeah so it was it was actually fun to watch all week our traders you know they 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 did great you know i also last week was slow for us but at the very least, we didn't have uh, walk away with the loss. Well, which, that's one of the things, as you which said, which I'm um, actually very excited right. about. Right, you know? uh, that I love about trading because it's not just win or lose, right? Because you, you said something very important at the beginning of, mm -hmm. of that market watch, and it's that it depends on the position that you're in Correct. when these drastic things start to occur. So you know, it, it's. Not that you, you can predict. No, you can never. But then you know, we will all be billionaires. Yeah, because if anybody can <laughs> you know. come out and, you know, that's what they call insider trading and everything else, nobody's going to come out and release a report before the report is released. So if you're talking about the economy or unemployment or, or anything like that that can impact the market, but then something suddenly, a report will come out that'll cause something to reverse very quickly. And if you're already in a losing position when it reverses, and that's great, you start to Correct. gain back. So it's really hard to detect when trader can actually win on a position and because then it's a reverse position for somebody trip. else another yeah. one loses right yeah. so it's it's very interesting it's um something that you do have to pay you know careful attention to um also but yeah so the the last thing guys i want to talk to you guys about in the market is bitcoin to all the bitcoin lovers there cryptocurrency actually kind of went sideways um this week and when I say sideways, is mm -hmm. that it was pretty much like a little roller coaster. It was up and down. Beginning of the week, uh, crypto, all cryptos lost about 10%. And you, we see Bitcoin went down to about $9,500 in the beginning of the week. But it slowly started climbing back up. And I think as of now, I know as of today, it actually went all the way back up to 10000 wow. so which is amazing. That's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah, it, it gets yeah. a little scary when it starts to take those those dips. But you're right. It did resist and, and make a comeback. Um, so that's also. But one of the great things um, we've added to our program that we spoke about briefly last time is a pilot program. The pilot program, which our traders right now that are on the program, they're doing really well. Really so excited we about that. So we have a few traders that actually has been yeah. all week been trading on our demo accounts, on companies' demo accounts. Right. And they've actually been performing really nice. So they still have some ways to go. So they, whatever they're doing is great, and we're very excited. 
and we can't wait to bring some new traders on board. Yeah, because uh, I, I mean, we, we did it out of the need for a couple of things. One, when, when the business is continuing to grow and we wanted to add more experienced traders onto what we have already. But one of the things also in our experiences with network marketing and, and talking to a lot of people about the business is I'm finding a lot of people, you know, although they appreciate um, our self trade, our, our um, automated trading program, all right, which we use uh, traders and bots, a combination Correct. of both. Um, but a lot of people want to learn how to trade on their own, mm -hmm. or they're already starting to try to trade on their own. And because we have a registered platform here at Novatech that is a um, our own MetaTrader platform, people, a lot of don't people don't know this, but they can just go on our platform and, and trade on your own. Yeah, um, we so, don't have to set up the account for you. You can no? actually download the app, find us as a broker, MetaTrader Five, awesome. MT. Guys, if you haven't done so already, please um, download the free MetaTrader app. Uh, you can find it in the Play Store or the um, app store and open up a demo account and I encourage everybody to do this whether you're using our automated trading program where we trade on your behalf or you're not um, I think it's a, a great way for you to familiarize yourself with the different symbols um, the market trends and especially we're talking today about building businesses this really gives you an opportunity to learn and understand the business so that you can get better at building and it, and, talk and, and, it and talking uh, about it to others and and have a sense of confidence about what it is that you're talking about and know that um, we're gonna be number one and, in household yeah, name absolutely number Thank one very much. Yes, thanks for joining us love you all all right see you next week all thanks right.